One of the ingredients that comes up in a lot of DIY sites on making your own sunscreen is shea butter. Now shea butter has been used in skincare products for a long time because it has a lot of wonderful properties to it that include that it's rich in lots of triglycerides, fatty acids, as well as phytochemicals. And the phytochemicals themselves are the ones that have been linked to sun protection. So you'll often find shea butter in moisturizers, hair conditioners, as well as lip care products because of its hydrating properties. It's both a moisturizer, it has anti-inflammatory properties, it has antimicrobial properties, and yes, it does have photoprotective properties. The challenge in quantifying the actual SPF of these products is that it really does vary based on the quality of the product that you obtain. There's a study I found that demonstrated that a shea butter product with a triterpene concentration of 20% demonstrated an SPF of three or four. Now this is pretty good, but again, this is hard to quantify if you were to try to formulate a product on your own. It has been shown to increase the photostability of various sunscreen ingredients. Shea butter, if found in your sunscreen products, can enhance their photostability as well as potentially the SPF of those products, but we really must rely on testing to demonstrate the actual SPF you're getting out of this product to avoid a false sense of security when you're using it. To test for shea butter's ability to clog your pores does rely on specialized testing. There are several sites that state that it is non-pore clogging. However, I did not come across any medical studies that confirm this data, and this really does depend on the formulation of the product that you're using. Although shea butter itself is rich in triglycerides and fatty acids, it likely has a low probability of clogging your pores, but this really does depend on the nature of the formulation that you're using the product in. Shea butter also has a very low likelihood of causing contact dermatitis. However, it's always a possibility that we need to be aware of and also depends on the formulation of the overall product that you're using.